Thanks for clicking on this video. I'm Larry Cavanaugh, and I'm the author of Nobody Here Wears Ostrich Leather Boots. It's a mostly happy set of stories and vignettes that cover a long time, beginning with my days at Notre Dame, when I was courting that pretty young lady who became my wife. And after almost 60 years and six children, she still is. After Notre Dame, we traveled to Rice University, where I got my PhD in space physics, and that was what got me a job in Washington with NASA at their headquarters. Washington, a place where you get to meet so many people and see so many things. I had a five-hour conversation with Werner von Braun, met lots of astronauts and Nobel Prize winners, got to take my two young children to the Washington Monument for a Fourth of July celebration, where, by the way, we happened into a group of demonstrators and got tear-gassed and had many happy adventures in very happy and heavy traffic. But after several years in Washington and exciting times with NASA, I got the wanderlust and the opportunity to join the spirit of the 70s and go live on a farm and raise cattle for a while. This took me to a place called Louisa, Virginia, where I also kept my physics alive by being a part-time visiting professor in the astronomy department at the University of Virginia. Somehow, all of this led to developing real estate and then developing a country club, and then developing the first golf course in Louisa County, for which I got some very good publicity. Of course, as much fun as it was to develop a golf course, I was also excited at the attempt, with my growing number of children, to create the tallest sundial in the world. To do this, I started with a 48-foot tall concrete silo, and with my kids, painted some date and hour lines on the inside, which I had calculated using a Radio Shack TRS-80 computer. Some artwork added by my daughter, and we had a project that got wonderful publicity in Richmond and in Charlottesville, and almost made the Guinness Book of World Records. We had the records locked up until somebody discovered something taller than that that had been in India for the past uh, 700 years or so. Anyway, the country club and golf course were successful ventures, but after selling it all off to the members, I needed to get back to science. So I got a job at the Louisa High School teaching math and physics. The physics experiments that I did with the students sometimes blew up, like this one. And sometimes I got to do unusual things outside of the textbooks such as the time I shrink-wrapped the class and showed them how easy it was to tip them over. Of course, they enjoyed getting back at me by taking a sledgehammer and breaking up a cinder block over my stomach. The fun things about being at a high school also included the Renaissance Club and their annual living chess game. I was, by some treachery and some deceit, the reigning chess champion for four years until I got upended by the right person to do it. But more memorable was the juggling club which I started. I started a juggling club because the school already had an astronomy club and their mentor didn't want to give it up. It was just as well. The kids learned to juggle, ride unicycles, toss around flaming torches, and I learned how to do torches myself. The only thing that interfered in all this was a thing called cancer. After I had reached retirement age at the school, but kept teaching anyway, I fell victim to esophageal cancer, stage 3. I was supposed to die from this, but a very good doctor saved me. Then I got a brain tumor, and a medical miracle called gamma knife surgery saved me from that. Then I got prostate cancer, and radiation implants saved me from that. This all made me start to wonder. Was there a message here? Is this a series of miracles that means there's something else I need to do with my life? I don't know. Maybe there's more to come. I've put a lot of really good stories into this book, and I hope you read it. Whether there's more to come or not, I'm not going to be wearing any ostrich leather boots. If you want to know where that thought comes from, you'll need to read the book.